no, nothing that nothing that would actually give meaningful discussion to the subject. So he had to define it himself, and this, he started off with two beliefs. Number one was that there was a capacity that you could reach that would lend itself generally well to any any activity out there. And number two, reaching this capacity was significant to your life. There was no aspect of your relationships or your work or your personality that wouldn't be affected dramatically by reaching this capacity. So those are his two beliefs. And what ended up happening was, because he, he himself did not have a, def a definition and knew the had to make one, he started off with three models, three operational models, by which to, by which to go forward with it. It's, it's all written up there inside, but we'll go over it, we'll go over it here right now. So three models of fitness. We'll start with the number one, the 10 general physical skills. This was actually postulated by uh, Bruce Evans and Jim Colley of Dynamax, the makers of our medicine balls. So the 10 skills, he had seen lists before of three skills or four skills or five, but saw 10, 10, four is better, right? Uh, cardio, respiratory endurance, and strength, power, speed, flexibility, coordination, accuracy, ability, and balance. There's a, it's, and before I get into it more, nature has no obligation to honor anyone's list of 10 skills. They're perfectly interdependent. You can't necessarily have one without the other, but we'll talk about it anyways, in, in as far as the definitions are delineated, right? The first four, cardio respiratory endurance, stamina, strength, flexibility. There are actual actual organic changes in the body. There's a change in tissue, right? Muscles get, get longer, get bigger, your heart and lungs get weak, right? Actual organic changes. So it's organic and getting better or worse at the top four comes about through training. Bottom four, coordination, accuracy, agility, balance. All, all between the ears, all nervous system, right? So nothing happens in the body, it's just nervous system. And to get better or worse at these comes through more or less practice. Okay, so if you're a computer guy, the top four can be thought of as hardware, and the bottom four as software. Okay? Raw materials, skills. Yeah, or if you're a Vegas guy, big money, big sexy, right? So in cross and the middle two, power and speed, Equal parts both. Equal parts both. So now, where CrossFit came in was Dynamax had given definitions to each of these, but what CrossFit said was essentially, you are as fit as you are competent in each of the 10 skills. And a fitness program is only as good as its ability to, to improve your ability in each of the 10 skills. Our our quality as trainers is only as good as our ability to improve our training skills here. So we'll play around with this for a little bit. Strength, and even power and speed. If you, if you come from, say, military background, sports, athletic background, can you see, if you're, if you're on a military mission, that a lack of strength can cost you the mission? Or maybe a lack of speed can cost you your life? Or a lack of accuracy can cost you the game? Even at work, if you are not fast enough at something, it'll cost you your, it'll cost you your objective, right? So you want to be good at all of these things. Now, to go on the other extreme, Let's look at a world-class strength guy, thousand pound at least, thousand pound deadlift guy, or even a thousand pound back squat guy. Super strong, but just part of the adaptation. He won't be able to box jump very high. He'll gas after running, running maybe half a mile. Walks funny, right? Not no character flaws. It's just part of the adaptation. Or world-class speed guy, so sub four minute mile, three three forty seven mile guy. Useless to be in case of emergency. Can't can't save the life of his friend if he had to. Uh, but super fast, right? So, but if we had someone with a 500 pound back squat, sub five mile, now I can that's the kind of fitness that we're looking for. We can play that game with any of these things. So take, take world class flexibility. So contortionist, right? People that can fit into boxes. Same thing. They're, they're, they're going to be lacking in something else, and that's just you know, good. Good fitness person, I would say. World class, world class crossfitter, something like 65 to 70, pushing 65, 70 percent in world class everything. Right? So that's that's at least the numbers that, that I've been able to read right now. So that's the first model, the 10 general physical skills. Number two, at the time we knew that there were three metabolic pathways, and these are just engines that produce ATP, the, the energy currency for all life. You know it? So. Don't get caught up in the in the names here, but just I want you to worry about the, the energy domains and the time domains. So the first one, phosphagen, very high power, craps out about 10 seconds. So with this, let's think those heavy deadlift days where you're looking for your deadlift max, or the back squat triple days, or a 40 yard dash, or three three pulls on the rower, or a 50 yard slip, something that's very very high power, 
but also very there's no way you can maintain that power output for longer than 10 seconds. Possibly pathway. Middle one, glycolytic pathway, peaks about one minute, craps out around maybe a few minutes. So 400 meter dash, 100 meter swim, as many squats as you can do in a minute. So you know, medium power, medium duration, glycolytic pathway, right? And then finally, there's the oxidative pathway. It counts for 30 to 40 percent of your, of your power, and uh, you can continue for minutes, hours, days. Minutes, hours, days, right? So another thing here, just by definition, these first two are anaerobic, and the one on the right is aerobic. See you later, Chris. Now, Oxid oxidative referring to a kind of bar. Oxidative referring to you need you need oxygen. The oxygen is your is your key to your team. Yeah. Where phosphogen and glycolytic, it's not oxygen, it's actually uh, phosphate and uh, glycolytic. Now in 2006, I think, they discovered a fourth pathway, and it kind of looked like this. This peaked around six to nine minutes, and it actually was able to use uh, lactic acid, long not to be enemy, right? And it was called the lactate shuttle. And that, it, that, it seemed that CrossFitters, at, it, so it seemed that CrossFitters were maximizing this output as well. So it lasts about six to nine minutes. Um, someday we know that they're, we're probably, we're, they're probably gonna find more, like yeah. five, five or six. And it, it really doesn't change our, it really doesn't change it. We, we want that too, right? We don't want you to just be good at one or two of these things. We want you to be good at all of them, right? So we'll, we'll play around with this. Let's, let's, let's look at the world-class strength guy again, 1,000 pound deadlift. So basically at the top of your performance, but his curve looks like that. Anything, we introduce him to anything else outside that mode or time, totally done for, right? Uh, winner of the Ironman, they actually look like this. So able to able to maximize out, but only only in the realm of long distance bike run swim. If we take them out of bike run swim and introduce them to medium intensity work that they've never done before, they actually so in CrossFit, we obviously want you to look like this. Fit across all, fit across everything. Right? So that's the second model. Uh, like, uh, good in, good in all the metabolic pathways that we know of, and things that we even don't know. All right, so the firing checks. Now the third model, very hard to illustrate, so I, I just, I just tend to, tend to explain it. It's called the Hopper model or the statistical model, and the Hopper model is. You take a big pot or, or a big hopper and you fill it with every coach's and drill instructor's and trainer's favorite skills and drills, right? So the combine of football, uh, hopscotch, any of our CrossFit, any of our CrossFit workouts, and we get a little interactive here. So any physical task you can think of, I'm just gonna say uh, push-ups, right? Max push-ups in the same two minutes. Yes. Two minutes? Or whatever. No, 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 oh. no, 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 give me something, like, give, me a, give me something to put into uh, the hopper. Right? Fence climbing. Fence climbing, okay, good. Give me something. Uh, flipping a person over your back. Flipping a person Carrying over your back, them. awesome, awesome, good. All right, so I'm going to say swim from here to Catalina. All right, go. Opening and closing the door. Opening and closing the door, awesome. Uh, fireman carry. Fireman carry, good. Uh, climbing a rope. Pushing that garbage. Pushing the garbage, can. good. Uh... Pushing a car. Pushing a car. Good. So, and let's get like I, anything physical. We could say rollerblading backwards is, a, is another funny one. Any of the any of the uh, any of the named workouts in CrossFit. Any of those things, right? So, okay. and the more the better. So you can literally fill this thing with hundreds of hundreds, if not thousands of things. What's going on, man? Hey, is this the nutrition thing that I came for? Yes. Can I grab a seat? Yes. Go for it. All right. Sorry. Uh, sorry. All right. So now, here's here's the contention. Get a group of people and. Start pulling things out of the hopper and see what happens. So the contention is he or she is fittest that can best and on average complete most if not all of these tasks. Okay, super simple. Now in practical application, here's what it looks like. Everyone get a bunch of group get a group of people together and it's actually pretty funny to watch because as you as you as you actually do it and, and draw things out, and it's funny too because when we did it, we didn't have time to write hundreds of things and put them in. So what, what ended up happening was I wrote a bunch of things on the board and used a twenty-sided die. You know, twenty-sided die. Yeah. Not a lot of people. Not a lot of people know. D twenty. D twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Nerds. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. Good. So, so we have to use that, but it's the same thing, right? It's the same, same idea. So you start reaching in and pulling things out, and what ends up happening is a group of people. You got a group. 
and you know that you don't have to be the best, you just have to be better than someone next than the person next to you. Everyone starts nutting up and everyone starts getting scared of the things that they don't want to see come out of that thing versus the things that they're really good at. I would imagine, Jackson, that you want to see heavy deadlifts come out of this thing next to your next to your 1 p.m. cohort, right? Because you know you would crush them, right? But there are things that you don't want to see come out of there, like pull-ups or running, right? So whatever those things are, we, and we all have them, the, the first of all, the contention is if you're ready, the more ready you are for anything, the more fit you are, the better you perform on average statistically at these things, the more fit you are. And if you are not fit in several of these things, or if you're scared of one or two things, it would serve your fitness well and better to work on those things versus versus actually Stick, sticking around, sticking Getting around better, things, right? The things that you're good at. Yes, yeah. yeah. Sticking around the things that you're that you're good at, right? And that's not just this is not just us being assholes. It's if you've got holes in your fitness, you want to the to the extent that your fitness complete fitness looks like this. Nobody looks like that. Everyone kind of looks like that. You will fail at the margin of your experience, right? So you want to fill in those holes as much as possible. So now that's the third model, and we'll play we'll we'll play this game some more.